So a lot of people ask how long the paint takes to dry. I think it's one of the most common questions. And so it all depends on how thick the paint is. The thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry because the water has to evaporate up. So areas that are about this thick probably take just a few days to dry. You know, this painting was dry to touch in 24 hours. And I usually put a fan on them and it dries a lot faster. So I was working on this piece about three hours ago and I started to paint this wings on this piece here. And then areas are like an inch thick and it's starting to be dry to touch. I can touch it with my finger. It doesn't come off on my finger, but it's still really soft. But when I come in in the morning, you know, about another 16, 18 hours from now, I'll be able to push on it pretty hard and it's gonna be pretty well dry, but that will take about three or four days to thoroughly dry. The paint won't sag at all, but you do have to fight gravity. And when I work on my easels a lot, I'm working on different levels at different times. And so at this thickness, it can sustain fairly vertical height. But as I go a little bit thicker, I'm gonna to have to lean it down more. So a lot of people ask, is this paint expensive? A lot of people compare this or think about traditional acrylic paints, which is different than this paint. This is a medium viscosity paint, like our medium viscosity paints here. However, a typical tube of two ounce paint or our paint might run six to nine dollars. Our titanium white heavy texture starts at $11 for a half a quart and goes to $18 for a full quart. And you can go a long way with this painting. You can put as much paint on there as you want. I particularly like to use a lot of paint. And I use a lot of paint because when I was teaching myself how to paint, I became very expressive with a lot of paint. I like large, broad strokes and lots of movement in my work. And when I started to paint that way, my work evolved into a freedom that I really enjoyed my work. And I know that's not for everybody, but that was what it was for me. And so I use a lot of paint because it's my style and it's a sculptural style. And so this is how I work. This is one stroke of paint right here. This is one stroke of paint right here. It's a sculptural way of painting. You don't have to paint this heavy. You look at these areas right here, this paint will go a long way painting just this area like this. Okay, so a lot of people are confused a little bit about our paints. And so we have our heavy texture and we have our medium viscosity paints. And the viscosity is basically the weight or the thickness that it moves, okay? So this right here is our heavy texture. Look how that just holds that peak right there. That's, I never not get excited about this when it holds like that. And it's silky smooth the way it works like that. And then we have our medium viscosities, which seem a little thick, but I could, there's no way this paint will pile up high. It'll start just settling down. You know, it's not gonna get that high. And if I try to pull it in, it's gonna settle down. But what's great about them, the way they work together, is the way they lay over the top of each other or mix together. And so this is the part that I always get excited about is how the medium viscosities lay over the top of the heavy viscosities. So our heavy texture, our medium viscosity. So our medium viscosity paints are what most paint companies call their heavy body. They are a medium body compared to our heavy texture, so I know it gets a little confusing. But I use these medium viscosities for all my backgrounds, but I also use them for when I'm mixing with paints or glazing over. So you can see here where I glazed over this viridian green over the heavy texture. But also if I want to get a nice turquoise color, I'm going to mix those together and I'm going to create this color right here. And so this, is a, this would be a very deep mix right here. Or if I want to mix it with a little bit less, get a nice light tone right there. So sometimes when you go on the website, it's like, well, which paint do I buy? And I don't know which one's which, okay? So our Pyrol Red, medium viscosity, and our Pyrol Red heavy texture. So this is the heavy texture. This is what you're gonna work with a palette knife and get these high textures. And this is the medium viscosity where you're gonna use that in a way that's gonna give you your backgrounds and your blending of your colors. So our paints by design do not crack. However, there are things that could cause them to crack, 
but the paint itself inherently is very flexible when it dries. It has the perfect amount of flexibility and hardness. So there are some areas that your paint can crack. You know, it depends on what substrate you paint on. We paint on wood panels, which keeps it all really tight and firm. And so you, you would not have a crack. If you paint it on a canvas, potentially if the canvas moves before it's completely dry, it could possibly crack. If you paint on a wet surface or mix an oil paint with it or something, that could crack. But the paint on its own will not crack on its own. So I had a lot of crack in, in my early years, experimenting with different paints and different products, trying to get this texture. That's one of the reasons why I started this company, is I wanted to create the perfect texture paint that had the properties that would not crack, that stay, has the perfect amount of flexibility, the perfect amount of gloss, the perfect amount of rheology and flow. I like it to come off the knife perfectly, like room temperature butter. We make these paints with pure acrylics. We do not add any fillers to these paints. It is primarily just pigment and acrylic. So I'm very intimate with paint. My studio is here in the paint factory. My whole life is about paint. And so when we get new batches of paint or during the processes when I was developing this paint, it's going directly into my art studio where I'm practicing with it to perfect it and to get it exactly the way I want. So what gives it its signature thickness is basically the chemistry and we don't add any fillers or anything else to it. So a lot of people are concerned with waste and pain. And I think I mentioned it before, I'm gonna mention it again, that the best way to, to avoid waste and pain is take a solid color, whether it's titanium white or have pyrrol red here, and practice your palette knife strokes or whatever way you're gonna use it on the palette and do not mix any colors in it because I could practice here if I wanted to make you know, a flower petal, if I want to make a swoop, or whatever it may be, and then you'll have the confidence that when you go on there, boom, it's just gonna go on there nice and smoothly. Relative to traditional acrylics, you get much more volume here in paint than you do in other paint companies because we sell direct to consumer, we manufacture right here in our warehouse and we send it to you, so there is no middleman in this paint distribution process. And that's how we can sell affordable professional grade acrylics. So a lot of people ask, can you mix this with paints we already have? You know, if you're your other brands of acrylic paints. And for the most part, the answer is yes. However, there are times when certain brands of paint may or might not, may have more water in them. They might not have as high quality acrylic and as that water evaporates, it may separate on here. So you have to be cautious, but for the most part, they do work well, but we cannot guarantee the paints when you work with other paints. But I think for the most part, you're gonna be okay. So a lot of people say, hey, I'm a beginner. Can I use this paint? I'm afraid to use this paint, whatever it may be. This is the thing about working with texture and these large knives and such. You get to work in big, broad strokes, and you don't have to worry about those fine details. Of course, details are really important, but I think that it's best to start with limited color palettes and broad strokes, because once you get that first win, it gives you the confidence to do the next one, so keep it simple. However, the palette knife is super forgiven when you're working with it, much more than the brush. So yes, beginners, totally. We've had people that have never painted before buy our paints, and they're getting into art galleries and art shows already, and it's nuts. I am not a classically trained artist. I did not go to school to learn painting. So I basically look at the materials and try to apply them into my concepts. And that's why my style is much different, is because I was not taught how to do things and I didn't know the right or wrong way. So this is really a new way of painting. And there is no right or wrong. So you do not have to have education in painting. You can just create your own way of painting, and that's what I did. I created my own style of painting. I picked up a knife, I used it the way it made sense to me. And that's what art is about, is that freedom to explore and do whatever you want. So by nature, I am generally a very messy painter. And I think most people are not messy painters. However, I'm in a very clean studio here, and all I have to do is just take my time and methodically apply paint, and I'm not worried about being clean. However, I prefer to be messy, but it's certainly not a big deal to be very clean when you work with this paint. 
And so that's why I created the paint in these bags because it allows you to pretty much put this paint directly where you want it to be. Whether you're going on directly on your painting or on the palette, I can, instead of scooping in big messy buckets, I can put my dollops wherever I want and control where my paint goes. And that helps us be a lot cleaner with the paint. Perfectly clean. So when I'm done working with my paints, often all I do is, if there's a little paint on the tip, I'll just squeeze it out, but there's no paint there. Often I'll just leave it like that, especially if I'm gonna be painting the next day. But if I'm not gonna be painting, I'll just put a paper clip on there, or I'll fold it, or I'll put a piece of tape on there, but that's just gonna hold it closed. And I know this is a little bit of a different system to get used to, but the advantage of being able to pipe this directly in your palette and control it the way you want, and directly control it on the wood panel itself, it has its advantages. I like it.